we mentioned earlier that with respect to routing nets on a VLSI chip, clock and the power nets have very distinct characteristics. For clock, the main requirement is balancing skew. The clock signals which are arriving at multiple points must arrive almost at the same time. Of course, provided they are related. If they are unrelated, I really do not care. right? So, the clock nets has a large number of terminal points. Similar is the case for a ground or power net. So, when you are distributing the VDD and the ground signal across the chips, there is one similarity with clock is that the number of terminal points are large in number. If you consider this standard cell kind of a layout, so every standard cell that you include in your design, they will be having a power and a ground connection. So, you have to feed a power and ground to all of them. Okay. But there is a difference from clock routing. In clock routing, the issue was uh, equalization of skew, skew minimization. The clock should arrive almost at the same time, but in power and ground the requirement is different. So, there is no signaling. I am applying a constant voltage on the VDD and ground lines. So, I should uh, ensure that whatever current is drawn by the circuits which I am driving, my power lines or tracks should be should be wide enough to drive the required power. If I need higher power, I make the tracks wider. If I do not need that high power, I can make it narrower. Okay. And again, just like clock in power routing or the power routing also, we would not want frequently to move from one layer to the other. So, wherever via connections are essential, you only use those, rest we do not use. And again, most of the connections has to be on the same layer in a planar fashion, because as we switch across layers, your delays and other parasitics will go up, noise will increase, on the power supply line you will be getting some noise also, such things you can minimize. Okay. So, in this lecture we talk about power and ground routing. So, the basic problem I have already talked about. So, almost all the blocks in a design that you want to lay out on a VLSI chip will be requiring the power and ground connections. So, the power and ground pins are omnipresent across the chip, they are everywhere. And because of the reasons I just now talked about, they are typically laid on the same layer and on the metal layer, not on the other layers. Why? Because the resistivity of the metal layer is very good, it is resistance is less, so that signal degradation other other things will be much less. It can also carry larger currents, that is why all power networks are laid out on metal layers. Resistivity is smaller and wherever possible, we go for planar single layer implementation will try to minimize via connection unless it is extremely extremely essential okay fine so just like clock for vdd and power routing also we need two steps so in clock you require if you just recall your two step was first was designing a clock tree then distributing the clock tree to the actual terminals but for power and ground routing, these two steps are of course, the first step is similar. You try to construct some kind of a topology that will make connections to all the points where you need the power lines. Second, depending on the blocks where you are driving and their current requirements, you determine the appropriate widths of the various segments of the wires this is very important for power routing. 
like for example, as I have said you can say that for the power your line may look like you start with a very thick line from there you feed your power to two different lines this will be thinner. something like this. From there you feed to three different points, this will be even thinner. So, the width of the lines will vary depending on the total current driving requirements right. So, it will look something like this. So, for power and ground routing one for power and other for ground you need two interconnection tree obviously, there will be inter non intersecting because one for VDD and one for ground and as I just now said the widths of the trees at any particular branch must be proportional to the total current that it is expected to draw. Okay. So, from the root of the tree the, the widths will be wider, but, but as you move towards the leaf the widths will become thinner and thinner. So, we talk about broadly two approaches. The first approach is referred to as the grid structure. So, what does the grid structure say? It says that several rows of horizontal wires for both VDD and ground run parallel to each other on metal layer. The vertical wires run in another layer and connect the horizontal wires a block connects to the nearest VDD and ground. See this grid structure is very suitable for standard cell kind of designs. Just let us recall this standard cell design so that you can appreciate why you need this. So, I am showing some rows of this standard cell in a typical design. So, I am showing three standard cell rows right. Now, you recall I mentioned that whenever you place a particular standard cell, this cell has a particular property that it is V D D runs somewhere in the top, ground line runs somewhere in the bottom and their relative positions across all the cells are the same. So, what does that mean? Suppose, you place some cells across the rows. So, here also you place some cells, here also you place some cells. Now, these V D D and ground lines you see since they are placed side by side they will be touching one another. Okay. So, for the horizontal routing across the cells it is already done. So, you do not have to do anything. So, it is like a continuous line. So, this V D D and ground lines are already connected horizontally. So, if you take them out these are all running on metal layers right. So, what you can do? You can use another layer. So, I am showing it in a different color. Both will be metal layers of course, and these will be wire connection. Here you cannot avoid the wire connections. this will be your VDD connection, this will be your ground connection. So, on one layer you will be running the VDD and ground connection say vertically and, an, and in another metal layer. So, all of the metal layers across the cells they will be running horizontally, they will be connecting via via connection to the vertical lines. And you can see that the layering the 
the layout will be very regular in case of standard cell design it will look something like this right. So, let us proceed. <coughs> so, here I have shown something like this see these are the two parallel viridian ground I am showing. So, here I am shown in the diagram that they are coming from one place, but you can do it like this also instead of see here since I have tried to connect them from one side. So, I needed another layer and I need via connection, but what if uh, suppose I feed VDD from one side and ground from the other side, then do I need do I need a connection like this? See, then I, I do not need the separate layer. So, I can do it on a single layer like, like it is shown in this diagram. You see that the VDD connections they are all connected to this left vertical layer and the ground connection are connected to this vertical layer and the horizontal connections are typically on the M 4 metal M 4 or M 5 whatever and in some places if you require you can also add some additional vertical connection such that the impedances across the different power supply points they can be less, but this is optional again the way you route. But the basic concept I told you that you can feed it like this and as you can see that in the points on the left the wires are shown to be thicker, but as we drive to the cells it has become thinner. So, there is a wire sizing involved. So, talking about the grid like structure, so I am showing you another kind of a similar approach. So, which is used uh, in a slightly more general context not necessarily for standard cell that you can create a ring which surrounds the entire core of the chip like this like the one on the this. This whole surrounding thing is called the ring ok. You define a ring around a chip then you connect the I O pads to the ring. So, all the I O pads they are connected to the ring. The I O pads will be feeding the V D D or ground connections ok, they are all connected to the ring. Then create a mesh, so inside the chip you create a power mesh just like a clock mesh consisting of a set of stripes, which means gap a defined gaps on two or more layers. So, here so each of these these are stripes you create such metal stripes on more than two or more layers. So, that metal connections will be available power connections on more than one layers also, because in some cases you need these connections to be made available on more than one layer as well ok. So, the mesh is created accordingly the rails the vertical lines that was shown these are created on some metal layers and the metal layers are connected to the mesh something like this you create a mesh of power lines and also ground lines similarly and they will be available on one or more metal layers. So, that on the blocks wherever you need them you can take it from one of these layers right. So, the idea was something like this in some of the designs which are done. So, some of the metal layers their separation like this block I am showing. So, metal 4, metal 6, metal there are so many metallization. So, depending on which layer you are using the kind of connection their width their separation everything will be different. Now, one thing is true for VLSA fabrication as you move up and up in the layers the width of your lines become thicker and thicker wider and wider. So, it is better to lay out the power lines on one of the top layers because they will be they will be thicker in any case they can carry more currents ok. So, just the basic idea I told you. So, the second approach says that well we do not 
uh, here uh, we apply it uh, for a full custom kind of design. So, we do not assume that I have already pre laid out vertical and horizontal connection from there I simply take the power and ground. Here I am saying depending on the requirements like I may have a scenario like this that I have a block this is this is full custom. So, here I require a VDD connection here I require a ground connection here let us say suppose I have another block here like this. So, I require a VDD connection here I require a ground connection here. So, I also require a ground connection here let us say. Similarly, I can have another block here VDD here ground here something like this. So, now the requirement is that let us construct a tree depending on my actual problem at hand. So, where are the VDD nets? These are the three points I have to connect for VDD and these are the four points I have to connect for ground. So, for these two let us try and construct two trees that will move from two opposite direction these are called interdigitated trees. And if you are able to do this in a systematic way you will be getting a layout of the power and ground lines on the same layer and once you do it then you can consider the sizing you can analyze the current requirements for the different blocks you can appropriately set the width of the different wires right. So, uh, means one of the net VDD and ground one of them starts from the left edge of the chip and the other starts from the right edge of the chip I will show some examples. So, the routing that you get is planar in the sense that you can do it on the same layer and sometimes to get the path. So, you can use either Lee's or line search kind of algorithms or a combination of them. So, the strategy is that you see VDD you start from left ground we start from right. Let us say let us do the VDD first. So, initially there are few blocks most of the routing areas are available for me. So, initially let me use the Lee's uh, uh, not Lee's the first algorithm the line search let us say high towers algorithm I use. So, I will quickly get some paths. So, how to connect the VDD nets? So, once I have connected the VDD nets some of the lines are already laid and they are blocked from other side now comes the ground net. So, there sometimes the line search algorithm may find difficulty in finding a path because some of the paths may be blocked. So, here you can use a line search algorithm to find a complex path if it is available because if you recall the Lee's algorithm will always find a path. So, for the ground net when required you can use the Lee's algorithm that will guarantee you a path if it exists at all right. So, this is the basic strategy. So, the steps involved are as follows you planarize the topology of the net layer assignment you just just assign them to one or more metal layers and as I said depending on the current requirements you set the width of the different net segments. Okay. So, let us take a simple example say ground we are routing from the left and VDD from the right. So, these there are five blocks with some ground and VDD requirements. So, the ground is being routed like this you can see and VDD from around VDD is shown by the dotted line. And once you have done this you can fix the thickness of these lines the thickness width of these lines can be set accordingly right. So, let us take another example the same example in fact the same example I am showing that whenever you route 
a net, let us say the ground net. So, what was the requirement? There are some ground pins that are available in this 5 blocks, you required a connection. Similarly, for the net for VDD, they also needed to connect this 5 blocks. So, what we actually need is something called a Hamiltonian path in graph theory. So, in graphs a Hamiltonian path is defined to be a path, a path is what a sequence of edges. A Hamiltonian path means you start with a vertex, go on traversing the edges in such a way that a vertex is traversed only once, you do not cross a vertex twice. So, once you get a Hamiltonian path, you have one way of routing the power or the ground lines. Okay. So, here, so, so once you got a Hamiltonian path, you embed some horizontal and vertical segments corresponding to this Hamiltonian path. So, the blue one correspond to the ground line and the red one correspond to the VDD line. So, here uh, as you can see that it is possible to put all of them together on the same layer. So, although they are shown on different colors, but they are not intersecting anywhere. There are two trees which are like a comb they are called interdigitated trees, they are not intersecting, but they are sitting side by side, right. So, here there is another example, where you can see VDD from this side, ground from this side. So, the VDD net you can see and ground net is coming from the other side. So, in the same way they get routed. Okay. So, the idea is this. So, you see that when we talk about VDD and ground routing, there are some other issues like routability, trying to complete the routing on the same layer as possible and then sizing of the different segments of the wires. Okay. So, to summarize here, for power and ground routing, we need special attention with respect to the wire widths because if the power supply wires are not wide enough, then you will be trying to draw more current through the wires, which are not designed to, to handle those high currents and there may be some physical breakdown in the wires. So, you have a routing algorithm, where wire widths can be non-uniform. This is unlike clock or signal nets, where wire widths are all same, we are not changing the width of the wires, but in power supply routing, we are changing the width of the wires depending on our requirements. Okay. So, the sizing of the wires is required and usually in a routing problem, the power and ground nets are first routed followed by all other nets and as I said they are typically laid out entirely on metal layers because of their low resistivity. And the signal nets like uh, the channel routing that I talked about, you just understand one thing, you think of the channel routing, like you, you again look at the say means a couple of standard cell rows with channel in between. So, what we said is that the VDD connections across all the cells can be connected like this, this can feed VDD. The ground lines out here, they can be connected like this. But the channels which is in between, you see here also you need two layers like you can have some connections like this. Right? This is a the HVC model I am saying, 
but if you do not want to cross then you will be just using blue on the vertical segments and green on the green on the horizontal segments only in that case you will not be using this you can use this and this. Now, what I am saying is that and just if you see here what we have done. So, we are using the blue metal layer, some metal layer for routing our VDD and ground connection, but during the channel routing also we are reusing that metal layer wherever you can, because within the channel we are not routing VDD and ground. So, the channel area is available for that, okay. but if you are using over the cell routing we, are, we cannot use the blue line, because already blue is used here we will have to use some other layer right. So, so here we are saying that uh, the signal nets within the channels may share the metal layers with power and ground, but if there is a power layer in case of standard cell not in standard cell, but uh, for the full custom design they will have to change layers, because power and ground will always have higher priority and you do not want to use wire connection on power and ground layers and obviously, choice of layer is the metal layer aluminum which is most widely used that has the lowest resistivity. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture. So, in the next week we shall be starting our discussion on the timing analysis the various ways you can carry out timing analysis, static timing analysis and, and the ways in which you can annotate or modify a design, so that they perform better with respect to timing. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture, thank you.